it was the Jurassic period, 1981. <laughs> I remember shopping for a dress for my eighth grade graduation dance. We couldn't afford the mall, so mom took me to the local neighborhood store, but I was so excited because there it was, the dress of my dreams. It was so cute. It was pink with lace and just the right amount of sequins and pearls. Mom, look, I ran over to the dress and I touched it and I was instantly transported to the dance. The gym with all its decorations, a big shiny disco ball, and the best music being played. I could even imagine myself dancing. And for the first time in my life, I knew if I could just have that dress, I would feel so beautiful, <laughs> like a princess. Can we get it? No, we cannot. I didn't get the dress. Number one, it was too expensive. And number two, it wasn't my size. I mean, they didn't have my size. Actually, they never had my size. I was used to it. Growing up, I was always a big girl, what I like to call chunky but funky. <laughs> but that was 1981, before the term plus size was invented. So where did I end up? Way in the back of the store, in this tiny little section with a big fat sign that read, Chubby Clearance. <sighs> I walked out of there with a big, bright blue dress that made me look like a walking curtain. And after that incident, I vowed that one day I would become a successful singer and I would make so much money that I would never have to shop in clearance again. Fast forward years later, and my dream of becoming a successful recording artist came true. And I was able to add radio personality, actress, and master life coach to my resume. I'm like J-Lo. <laughs> but with less money. <laughs> I'm J-Toe. <laughs> and anybody who has dreams of becoming successful usually dreams of taking care of their mom when they get there. And I was no different. I was going to hook mom up. And since she's plus life, plus life like me, one of the things I did was I gave her her very own Lane Bryant credit card and I told her to shop for clothes whenever she needed it. Well, 10 months went by, and she didn't charge anything on that card, not even a pair of socks. And when I confronted her, I, Judy, you know, because of my hip, I get tired walking around the store. All right, that's all right, so shop online. Yeah, but then if it doesn't fit me, I got to take it back. So to stop her from making any more excuses, because that's what they were, excuses. I took her to Lane Bryant myself. There we were in the middle of Lane Bryant and mom had carte blanche. Go ahead mom, buy anything you want. A few minutes later, I couldn't find her. And then I saw her all the way in the back, huddled, no, buried in my forbidden section, the clearance section. No, Mom, no. <laughs> but before I could say a word, she snuck into the dressing room with her clearance selection. And as I waited, I took inventory on all our past shopping adventures, and I realized, wow, Mom always shops on clearance. Always. I don't get it. I mean, I know she likes to save money, but come on, this is different. I was treating her. It was my treat. And after all, she had five of us. She raised all of us all by herself. She deserved this so bad. And when she came out of the dressing room, I could see she was struggling. Judy, let's just go. My mom hadn't bought anything for herself in so long. Nope, not going to happen, mom. Not on my watch. So I brought her over to a lounge chair to rest. And you know when people talk to you? and you're looking straight at them, but you don't hear a word they say. That's what was happening to me, because I was trying to understand why mom always shopped on clearance. And then the truth slapped me right in the face. Mom, can I ask you something? 
why do you always shop on clearance? Why? I knew I was treading on dangerous water, so I looked into her eyes and I took her hand. Mom, I don't know if anybody ever told you this, but you are not on clearance. Mom, you are worthy of so much more. And right there in the middle of Lane Bryant, she started crying. And I realized I had touched on something. So I wanted to share the message with you today. On that note, let's go shopping, shall we? Let's go to your local department store's clearance section. The last time I saw clearance, this is what I saw. It was all the way in the back, overcrowded clothing, suffocating everything on the racks, none of the sizes in the right place, and quite frankly, it was a mess. But what is clearance, really? Well, by definition, it's the process of removing things that are unwanted. And stores put things on clearance because they want to sell the merchandise. But if they can't, they have to do something drastic, otherwise they're going to lose their investment. So they decide to put things on sale. First 20%, 40%, 60%, and finally, the last place before its burial section, the clearance section. The clearance section is a store's way of saying, it's not worth much. Let's just get rid of it. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with shopping on clearance, especially when you're on a serious budget. Trust me, I'm from the Bronx, I know. And the truth is you can find some really great things on the clearance racks. You can find a cool shirt, a gorgeous dress in your size for a great value. That just wasn't my 1981 experience. But I really did appreciate that blue dress because I danced the night away. And I never would have spent that month's electricity bill money on a pair of whatever the TV ads tell me to get. What broke my heart that day was not where mom was shopping. It was how she saw herself as unworthy. So whatever you do, don't treat yourself like you're on clearance. And don't let anybody else treat you that way either. Because things are on clearance. People are not. So my question to you today is, in your life right now, are you treating yourself like you're on clearance? So desperate that you're willing to give yourself away for practically nothing? Oh my God, look at this shirt. It is so cool, it is off the chain, what? It's amazing. And just when you're getting excited, ah, oh, damn. The shirt has a hole in it. The zipper is stuck and there is a stain that you can't even identify. Maybe you think you're like that shirt. That hole in the shirt represents the gaping hole in your heart where mom or dad didn't love you enough. Where they left you, they abandoned you, they neglected you. It's the feeling that something is missing, that maybe you're not quite good enough. The zipper is all the times in your life when you try to move up in your life, but it keeps happening, bad things keep happening, and you get scared, so you get stuck. And that stain, that is the ugly truth you've told no one. The guilt of a crime committed, the rape, the molestation. But thank God you are not a shirt and you are not on clearance. Because whenever I think of clearance, I think of a sense of desperation, and I call this clearance behavior. Clearance behavior is when you want somebody to love you so bad that you don't care who or how, the first person who shows you attention, bam, you hook up. Now you're in bed with somebody you practically know. And the feeling that you're left with when they get up and walk away, or worse, ghost you, and you never speak to them again, that feeling is worth absolutely Nothing, and it's definitely not worth losing your dignity. Clearance behavior is bragging about the notches on your belt so you use people. Okay, so you have the notches, but where's the value in that? If, if, if these, these notches mean nothing, 
because in reality, it's a direct reflection of what you think of yourself. That you feel so empty inside, you have to use somebody to feel like somebody. Clearance behavior is when you know you can do better and you want to do better, but you don't dare take the risk. It's cutting corners so that you can get what you want. That's instant gratification. It's like the high you get when you go on a shopping spree and you go home only to realize that there's nothing there of value. And speaking of value, darlings, let's talk luxury, shall we? Let's go to a luxury department store, what I like to call a shishi fufu store, like Louis Vuitton on Michigan Avenue. Gorgeous displays and the most courteous salespeople with the most accommodating smiles you've ever seen. And at some of these shishi fufu stores, they offer you champagne and you didn't even buy anything yet. It's amazing. Oh my God, Becky, those shoes are hot. Oh my God, they're so sexy. They are sexy, I'm gonna take over the world shoes. And the scent of the leather is calling you by name. Trust me, because it calls me by name all the time. <laughs> and you have to take a deep breath when you're gonna look at that price tag. And that's if there's a price tag on it. Because you know if you have to ask the salesperson how much it costs, it's going to cost you a fortune. That's luxury. The best of the best. Gentlemen, let's go to a luxury auto dealership. Damn, she is sexy. <laughs> Whether it's a Mercedes, a BMW, or a Lamborghini. You walk into one of these places, you had better be prepared. Not only do you have to have an immaculate credit score, but you have to have a huge down payment, and then you still have to sign a whole bunch of contracts to prove that you're worthy of such an investment. You, then you have to get insurance, so that if something goes wrong, you can restore it to its original condition. But when you leave that dealership with the keys in your hand, and you hear that engine purr, you remember that the work and the patience and the sacrifice was well worth it because that's the beauty of delayed gratification. And then once you have it, you value it, you cherish it, and you protect it. And that's luxury, when you know something's worth and you protect it at all costs. And FYI, there's a whole science dedicating to teaching these ad execs how to convince you that in 30 seconds they have to entice you, that if you don't have these luxury items by the time the commercial is over, you have no status, no gain. But I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Those luxury items aren't worth nearly as much as they make you believe they are. But you are. You have value. That's what you are, a luxury human being. On this planet, on display with the light shining in on your glory. You, you are valuable, you're so worth it. In fact, there's only one of you ever made, often imitated, never duplicated. So you should act with luxury behavior. That means Yes, you want somebody to love you, but you know it takes time for the person to earn your trust, and then they still have to prove that they are worth it. And even so, it's on your timeline, not theirs. You have so many plans and purposes and ambitions that you don't have time to play games about what notches you have on your belt, because you care about the quality of the belt and how it's made, because without a good belt, you're not gonna be able to hold up your pants anyway. <laughs> you feel that even though you're scared to get ahead, to try, you do it afraid anyway. And you would never cut corners because you understand that anything in life worth having is worth it all. That is delayed gratification. Why? Because you are growing into an amazing, formidable, fierce, unstoppable human being that you were created to be. You bold, brave. You don't think you're better than other people, but you don't think you're worse than other people. You know your worth. More than mediocre, highly anointed, you destined to be great. You have value. You are worthy. 
So feel the luxury inside you because you are worth more than anything on any rack, anywhere, anytime. Because you are worth it and you are not on clearance. Oh, by the way, this dress, clearance. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs>